And it just so happened that this was about 12 days before a horrible and terrible event happened in New York City. It was about 12 days before the event of September 11, 2001, where terrorists drove airplanes into the World Trade Center building. Well, it was uh, kind of a normal, cool day. When the incident first occurred, I was in the bathroom. I grabbed some ice cream and I started eating the ice cream. And it's actually when I ate the ice cream, I got what they call a you know, headache from eating ice. And it was just excruciating. That, that's sort of how it began. The feeling was like someone hit you upside the head with a sledgehammer. And it just was a very eerie feeling. So I went, I went back to the bedroom. So I laid down and uh, I, I was very restless. So my stomach was, was just excruciating and giving me a lot of uh, nausea and okay, feeling irritable. And I, I jumped up, just couldn't relax. It just, it just driving me crazy. After I jumped up, I, I went to the end of the bed. When I got, by the time I got to the end of the bed, I fell to the floor. And when I fell to the floor, I couldn't move the lower part of my body. My fiance had jumped out of the bed and was asking what was wrong. And as I was trying to speak, it was like somebody turned the light switch and it completely cut off my voice. And I felt I couldn't hardly breathe. Couldn't stand up. I couldn't feel the lower part of my body. I felt that this was the moment I was going to die. Barbara came over to me down while I was down on the floor. And I couldn't I couldn't answer her. I couldn't talk to her. She got on the phone and she called for an ambulance and called for the police to come. I was there on the floor waiting uh, for the ambulance to get there. And my son and my fiance got in the ambulance with me. When I was in the ambulance, and I really felt that this was the end. You know, when I first got to the hospital, and they were in the end, looking up at the, at the, at the lights and the ceiling when you go was a place that I didn't really want to be. It was one of the most horrible times in my life. And the reason it was was because I've always been able to take care of myself. The greatest fear I probably have ever had was the moment that I could not take care of myself. Uh, when I got out of the hospital, I was in a wheelchair. I could not see. I had double vision. I could not walk. I could not stand. I could not uh, talk clearly. And things I could see me clearly too because I, I had problems where, uh, because I couldn't talk, I had uh, some paralysis of the vocal cords. And I could not eat because they thought I was choked to death uh, or the food would go down into my lungs. I had problems uh, with my balance. I don't have the same feeling as on the left side of my body. Literally, when I sweat, the first sweat happens in the first on the right side of my body. I have delayed reactions when I touch something hot or cold. By the time, by the time I feel it, I'm either burnt or realize this is awfully cold. I mean, I would do crazy things. I would drive the car and where I could not see. I couldn't make out the street signs because my vision was so bad. And so, as the days went on, I realized, well, maybe I'm not going to die. So therefore, I have to prepare to live. And so, one day, I slowly, I threw away, I got rid of my wheelchair before I could walk. 
and I struggled with my walker. Got tired of that because I was determined to be able to allow my wife to be and my son to get back to a normal life. And for me to get back to a normal life and deal with the tragedy uh, that had happened. Eventually, I gave up the walk too. I started using just the cane. And I was at that time when I started really towards fulfilling my dream of always wanting to own a production company, to run a production company for years. That's what I did. 2005, I, I started a Wabi Sabi production. And the Wabi Sabi production, uh, because of all the work involved, I was in a, in, in, a sense, in a sense forced to improve my strength. I think I'm as tough mentally as I was at any point in my life, probably much more so uh, because I, I do realize that in order to maintain the level of what I want to do, I have to be mentally strong and as physically able as I possibly can. So, you know, I learned that the body and people can adapt to anything. You just have to have the willpower and the strength internally to want to do it and then have faith in your higher being, your higher power, your God, and then just allow it to happen by doing it. I am in the floor and I am the victim of the floor.